Dividend investing through ETFs is a very popular strategy. Dividends are normally paid out on a quarterly or yearly basis, but you can also get ETFs that pay out dividends on a monthly basis, making them a very consistent and reliable investment option. Throughout this video, I'll be giving you my top five monthly dividend ETFs. I'll also give you a step-by-step -step strategy to secure yourself a consistent $100 of dividend income each month. So jumping straight into number one, DHS or the Wisdom Tree US High Dividend Fund. It seeks to track the performance of high dividend yielding companies in the US stock market. This can be a great investment for dividend investors because you don't have to spend all of your time researching companies looking for those that offer the best dividend yield. Instead you get targeted exposure to multiple different companies that offer a high dividend yield. The top 10 companies include businesses such as ExxonMobil, Chevron and Coca-Cola. Companies in the top 10 make up roughly 45% of the entire ETF and a lot of them are very recognizable leading to the strong overall performance of this ETF. It's had an average 10 year return of 10.61% meaning that if you had invested $10,000 10 years ago your portfolio would be worth just over $27,500. Along with the strong ETF performance the fund has a dividend yield of 3.65%. It's great to see how well this fund performs even though it has a high dividend payout because a high dividend can negatively affect the growth of a company because it means that it has less capital to reinvest into itself in order to grow the business. Dividends are paid out from a company's profits back to investors recognizing them as part owners in the business and when the company is doing well and is profitable part of that money will be shared with its investors as well. These companies are spread out amongst various sectors as illustrated by the graph. The majority of them are in healthcare, energy and finance. It has quite a cheap expense ratio at 0.38% meaning Meaning that if you had invested $10,000 you would pay $38 in fees. So not very expensive at all, strong performance and good 10 year return but that's just the first ETF on the list. So jumping straight into number two is PGX or the Invesco Preferred ETF. The index essentially tracks the performance of fixed rate US dollar denominated preferred securities issued in the US domestic market. This complicated definition basically means that the index will invest the majority of its money into preferred stock. Now preferred stock provides different benefits to investors than common stock and common stock is what 90% of investors buy into when they are investing in the stock market. So the benefit of preferred stock which is what PGX heavily invests in is that it prioritizes dividend payouts to investors. Dividends are paid out first even in the event of bankruptcy or company merger and dividend payouts from preferred stock are also a lot higher than common stock. So you can see why it's number two because of the level of priority that it places on paying out a dividend. So you can be confident that your dividend will be paid out to you and it will be a safe investment option. So the overall yield for PGX is 4.87%, making it very profitable in terms of the dividend payout that it provides. There's a total of 301 different companies that make up this ETF with top 10 holdings, including companies like Invesco, Citigroup and Wells Fargo. The 10 year annual return for this ETF is 6.73%, meaning that if you had invested $10,000 10 years ago, your portfolio would be worth $19,180. The average return for this ETF is not as impressive as DHS, but overall the dividend yield is higher, so it's got a better ranking on the list. The expense ratio comes in at 0.52%, meaning that if you had invested $10,000, you would pay $52 in fees. I would give this a risk profile of 3 out of 5 due to the inclusion of more preferred stock than common stock. Number 3 is CII or the BlackRock Enhanced Capital and Income Fund. This ETF seeks to achieve its investment objective by investing in a portfolio of US and foreign securities. The dividend yield for it is 5.81% and the average total return is 12.88%. Meaning that if you had invested $10,000 10 years ago, your portfolio would be worth just over $33,580. This is a really balanced ETF that gives you access to both high dividend yielding companies and a strong average return. The strength of this ETF is related to the types of companies it gives you exposure to, with the top 10 holdings having very 
very recognizable businesses, including Microsoft, Amazon, and Google. It gives you exposure to large cap American companies, reducing the overall risk of the investment due to how established these businesses are. It includes amongst the biggest companies in the world, with some of them having a market cap in the trillions. 92% of the companies are American businesses, and the same percentage are all in large cap companies that exceed a market cap of $10 billion. But it also comes with a very high management fee of 0.85%, meaning that if you had invested $10,000, you would pay $85 in fees, making it so far the most expensive ETF to invest into. Number four is SDIV, or the Global X Super Dividend US ETF. This has a very high income potential due to it including 100 of the highest dividend paying companies. It's not restricted primarily to the US market the same way that CII was. So the true number of stocks in this ETF is 104 and many of them you won't really have heard of. The top 10 include companies like Logan Corp, China Aeon Group, sorry if I've butchered that, and Times China Holding. The average return for this ETF is only 2.5% meaning that if you had invested $10,000 10 years ago your portfolio would be worth $12,800. The return is a lot lower than other ETFs on this list and you would get a far better return with a non-dividend paying ETF like VOO but there's always a trade-off between dividend yield and average market return. You have to balance between the two and one will inversely affect the other. As I said previously in the video if there's a high dividend the company has less profit or less equity to grow their business as it's being paid back to shareholders but it's placed higher on the list because overall we're just judging these ETFs based on their dividend yield and the overall return is still positive because you don't want to get caught in a dividend trap and this is essentially a trap where unsavvy investors can be lured into a business purely based on its dividend yield and they're not looking at the overall performance of that business. If you look at something like AT&T which has a dividend yield of over 8.7% you might think that this is a great company to invest into if you are a dividend investor. However over the past five years this company has lost over 45% of its value meaning that you actually be losing money despite getting that high dividend payout and you can even get businesses that pay out over 20% of their dividend but that really just means that the company has no chance for growth because all of its money is going straight back to its investors so you have to keep in mind the overall capital appreciation of the company and the dividend yield and make sure that you're not just getting a high dividend payout but a terribly performing stock as long as the ETF or the stock is consistently increasing in value even if it's only by one, two or three percent, you're still going to be fine. Just don't be lured in by a juicy dividend and ignore the overall stock price. So the expense ratio for this comes in at 0.58%, meaning that if you had invested $10,000 10 years ago, you would pay $58 in fees. I'll give this ETF a risk profile of four because it invests in less established companies, meaning that a drop of two or three percent in its average return, this would mean the ETF would no longer be profitable and you'll actually be losing money despite receiving that dividend payout. Number five is KBWD or the KBW High Dividend Yield. It has a very impressive 10 year return at 8.58% meaning that $10,000 invested 10 years ago would be worth $22,800. So essentially this ETF will just invest the majority of its money into high dividend yielding American stocks. So the main sectors that it invests into is finance which is 66% and 34% into real estate. So the majority of the the companies in this ETF will offer some form of financial service or package such as insurance. There's 42 companies in the ETF with top 10 holdings including Auckland Island Capital, Chimera Investment Corp and Capsteed Mortgage Corp. Again not companies that you will have heard of but they do produce that very respectable return of 8.58% and a dividend yield of 6.77%. This ETF is placed higher on the list because it gives you that strong dividend yield along with good capital appreciation so you get the best of both worlds with one investment and it might seem like the perfect ETF however it does have the highest expense ratio at 1.24% meaning that you'll pay $124 for investing $10,000 in this ETF. This cost is over double that of the second most expensive ETF on this list which is SDIV. I believe there's more risk in this investment because it only invests into 42 companies and a lot of 
lot of them are purely based on the financial sector, meaning that if this area of the market is negatively affected, it will greatly impact on the overall return of the ETF itself. So if you wanted to work out how much money you need to make from your dividend investing, a great place to look is at a compound interest calculator. And here you can put in the amount of money that you're investing, the interest that you'll gain on it, and the number of years that you would like to calculate your returns for. So it can give you a very real example of the amount of money that you'd need depending on your goal. As an example, I'll show you how much money you would need to make $100 a month from your dividend income. Well, keep in mind the dividend return for KBWD, which is 6.77%. You would need a portfolio value of $19,000 to receive a dividend payout of just over $100 monthly. You would make $1,286 each year, which is $107 each month. This might not sound like a lot of money, but it's definitely nice to have some extra income. But the real benefit comes from consistently reinvesting these dividends and holding on to your investment long term. You can see on the screen here the amount of money that you would make if you had an initial investment of $5,000 across a 10 year period, keeping in mind that 6.77% return that KBWD offers. And then you can see over a 20 year period with no additional money added at all, your investment would nearly 4x going from $5,000 to over $18,500. And then a 30 year period, your investment would go just over 7x sitting at over $35,600. And these returns aren't factoring in the capital appreciation of the ETF, which has been 8.58% over that 10 year period. So you can see how beneficial long term investing is and reinvesting your dividends to make sure that you can keep on continually gaining that compound interest year by year. If you've made it this far into the video, make sure to drop a like for the YouTube algorithm. Now that you're familiar with some of the best dividend ETFs, you might be interested in the best growth ETFs. Check out this video on screen to see which ETF is the best option for you and will help you make the greatest profit.